Uh, shall I start? I suppose we should. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Lubos, Lubos Kotsman. I am release manager of OpenSUSE Leap. Here down there is my technical support, Max Lin or Yu Chen Lin. Yu Chen. Uh, so he will help me with any sort of uh, technical questions that you may ask. If you want to make Eugene's life easy, don't ask technical questions. <laughs> uh, just one question. How many of you were on SUSE Labs? Because I have the... Okay, so less than half. That's good. I had the exact same slides. I had to change them for the labs based on the discussion several times. I had to change it yesterday again after discussions with SUSE employees. So it's a living document. You may hear some new information. This is the most up-to-date set of slides that I have to the date, so, yeah. So just introducing the team. What is Leap? Uh, the text that you can see on the, on the slides is actually taken from Wiki. It's basically saying that it's a community distribution based on the latest available version of SUSE Linux Enterprise. And uh, I just wanted to highlight that we are talking about currently most, 15.4 is currently the most downloaded distribution out of distributions that OpenSUSE project has by far. What is ALP? Because a lot of the context that you will see on the slides is somehow related to ALP. There was like, I don't know, five, six, seven talks about ALP, so I will not go through it again. You've heard it from product management and so on. Uh, so I can only say, I, if you want, I can read it. It's basically a nature Linux platform from SUSE. It's currently in the state of prototype. It's under the development. Uh, the entire slides are actually done from the point of view of what we could do, what are the options, as we stand today with 15.5 being released in, in a, I don't know, two weeks from now. And we will map the current situation, and I will give you a few variants of what I think could happen, and I will tell you then what we will most likely do, OK? So, as you can see today, if you would draw a line, um, like there, you would see our rolling releases, right? Tumbleweed and MicroOS. And then on the other side, you see Leap 15, Leap Micro. If you haven't heard about Leap Micro before, it's basically open to the rebrand of SUSE Sleep Micro. It's a tiny, uh, tiny host OS for running containers, VMs. You can install it. You have cockpit out of the box. You can manage it for the browser. I use it at home for my next cloud. It kind of works. Uh, so this is what we currently offer to the users if you would go to get open to the org. Any questions? No? Good, good. So uh, let's talk about what happens if the SUSE ALP gets released, like the, or, or one of the solutions, right? Based on SUSE ALP, on the slides, we see that the upcoming will be ALP. Uh, also, everything that you see here, it's always open SUSE, OK? So if I say ALP Micro 1.0, I really mean the thing that we sync from, o, uh, from IBS to OBS and rebrand it with OpenSUSE branding. So if you see Alp Micro, it's always OpenSUSE Alp Micro, OK? So we'll have Alp Micro uh, and Leap Micro in parallel for a while. After the Leap Micro gets kind of, uh, and we always support it over two releases. After the EOL is done, we really want to focus only on Alp Micro, so we don't actually offer competing distributions. We'll have the latest one, which is, uh, which is basically regular schedule based. Uh, Host OS, we don't really want to offer multiple. It, it would not make any sense. People would probably want the latest anyway. Uh, we will have still Leap 15.5, right? That, that's going to be here up until end of 2024. This is when it should be EOL. And uh, yeah, Tumbleweed is here. MicroS is here. MicroS is being renamed to Aeon, as, as far as I understand, based on the community discussions. Uh, so if you would see Aeon mentioned, this is what it refers to specifically the desktop. And uh, this is what we sort of know that this will happen, right? Like, we know that SUSE will eventually come up with the, with the Alp Micro. It's kind of given. So this is, this is quite certain. This is happening. Uh, nobody wanted to show you a timeline, so I, I dare to show you a timeline. This is what was, uh, this is the latest communication to the public from SUSE side. Uh, I received approval to show it. So you can see that uh, we have SLEE 15. It's too out. OK. So we have SLEE 15 here. We have LEE 15X. You can see if you compare it with 42.X, we are kind of a little bit overdue uh, with the new major. And uh, this is the timeline as of SUSE Labs. Sorry, it should have been shifted by one week. And you have the Alp Micro here. And you have LEE 16. But uh, 
I will get to the leap 16 point. So just to give you to some perspective of uh, what's to be expected. And what can happen now? So let's say we've announced previously that we would not like to do more than leap 15.5 and then we really want 15.5 to be the last release and then focus on something newer. Uh, this variant kind of suggests what if we wouldn't do new leap? I'm not saying that we are doing it, I'm just saying that this is one of the valid options. What would happen? So we would have to, well, the only migration path from Lib users would be basically to Tumbleweed, right? You would have Alp Micro from SUSE, uh, OpenSUSE Alp Micro, and, uh, and that's it. I think that this is variant, especially if you know that Lib is really the most downloaded one, nobody really wants this, right? But uh, if you would be stopped or whatever, like, it can look like this. So then you have the other variant, which is on the safe side, because there's a lot of discussions. Okay, so we will come up with ALP, and uh, I would say there is a big expectation that we would refresh the community distribution, the classical one with the normal release uh, schedule, not the rolling one. And uh, the discussions are showing me that we need more time. Um, so ALP is not out yet, right? So we basically work with uh, a roadmap which is subject to the change, right? If it delays, we have to delay it as well. And uh, this, this ensures that, you know, it gets released, we have a little bit more time to actually revisit, like do we really want to make leap? Do we want to do a, something more hybrid, which is an uh, idea from Richard. By the way, Richard said hi, I called him if he's coming. He's sick, uh, but he's sending hi to everyone. Um, this is basically the safe choice. Uh, like we know that Leap 15.6 is not going to be a huge amount of effort. You know, it's, it's quite major distribution and it provides us time to actually cook something aside and maybe, you know, shortly after 15.6 come up with a new release. So I would say this is a safe variant to go for. We will make, make people happy. You know, people, some people got scared after initial communication that 15.5 and then we will do something completely different. So this is not happening. Uh, I would say this is basically the scheme that we would like to go with. Uh, because it makes the most sense given the uncertainty of information that we are, we are getting from all sides. Also, <laughs> before Suzelabs, I was pretty sure it's going to be a different variant, but based on the all conversations, which I'm really happy that they took place, we've sort of pre-agreed to go this way. Uh, if we would do the original scenario, um, we would kill the uh, Leap Micro 5.5, we would focus on the newly released Alp Micro 1.0, Right, aside from micro as desktop uh, or, or Aeon, and we would do Leap 16. And <laughs> month ago, everybody knew it is going to be built. Well, a month and a half ago, everybody knew it's going to be built in public, so we wouldn't necessarily have to do the rebrand. Right, we would have a little bit more like free hands to do maybe something based on Alp. But you know, since Alp would be already there in public, uh, or sorry, Alp Micro in this case, we could do something more traditional. But Based on everything that I've heard like over the past two weeks and the discussions we've had, like we know that this, this would basically uh, maybe set expectations for SUSE as well. Like, okay, so when is SLEE 16 coming? You know, people would be asking these questions. And I feel also based on lab discussions that we want to provide a little bit more time to SUSE to react and then, you know, make sure that we do something which is aligned with roadmaps, which is aligned with product management direction, and we do not create something that would basically put Suze into awkward situation that they would have to react to. Uh, the plan was basically to do classical distribution in a style that uh, Simon Lees will present tomorrow, right? Basically take out, out binaries or maybe even sources, rebuild it. Yeah. Tough question so far, the closing the leap gap and the migrations to SLES. We have a nice seamless tool which migrates your system with an, I don't know, like I call it espresso time. Um, that didn't work that well. I've heard some low numbers of migrations. It's, it's, it's still cool. Uh, maybe for some smoking test infrastructure of migrations that can work really well, that's, that's the use case that I know about. But there was not much of success, so the reusing of binaries I don't see as something which is a must have. But it would be classical distribution with uh, RPM based installation. We wanted to also, yeah, it's on the next slide, but we were considering forking Aeon or micro as desktop and provide users with a little bit more traditional desktop. Uh, sorry, yeah, a little bit more traditional desktop and the modern desktop with FlatHub, FlatPak uh, applications from FlatHub. So that's something that we were thinking about. But again, I feel like uh, at this point, if we would just go with this plan, I think that we would create more issues than, than yeah, it would just, it would backfire. Uh, 
So, talking about the idea of a D-micro as desktop, I would really like to see your feedback on that, because I'm quite excited about it. So, uh, basically, we would do with 16. If we call it lib 16, I suppose we will. Maybe subject to a change. If some people want something else, micro as desktop was renamed, maybe there will be idea to rename it too. Uh, also depends on what SUSE long-term plans is. If somebody shows me like five years roadmap, I'll be happy to say how it will be called. Right now, I don't see it. Um, what if there would be C16, right? That would just create conflict that I don't want to solve. Um, so my idea is that we would just fork the distribution from Tumbleweed with all the packages, including like well, all, all packages that make sense, uh, including micro ads. So we would have, uh, if you would go to get open SUSE you could basically choose I want stable or you know point releases or I want rolling. And then you would have essentially same options, right? You would have the classical distribution, either rolling or point releases. You would have a modern desktop based on the micro OS or Aeon. Again, stable or rolling. And uh, yeah, and then probably container host, right? Micro OS versus Alt Micro, for example, or open is Alt Micro. So this is the idea that I think that we kind of agreed in the team that that makes sense. We would like to see it. Uh, but uh, there is one problem, right? Uh, SUSE did not announce how the desktop in Alt will look like. They didn't uh, announce any, any schedule for it. So again, um, if you are pushing that this to be the modern desktop part, and then maybe SUSE will do the container style desktop, that, that can be also quite tricky. So yeah, our plan is to go with micro as desktop because uh, you know, as a modern variant, sort of, because it's there, it's, it works, people are using it. Uh, with the SUSE side experiments, I don't know what the future of this will be. I expect that it can happen. It can be a kiosk, you know, style desktop uh, that SUSE will be offering. Uh, but right now, we are kind of putting this to stop on the open SUSE side, and we will be focusing on classical distribution, fork of micro OS, and, and alt micro. Yeah, that's basically the same thing with the desktop. Uh, so what is the driver for these decisions? I'm presenting variants, not necessarily conclusions. Again, I'm saying 15.6 is the safe, safest solution or safest way to go for, because it doesn't put SUSE into conflict, a conflicting situation. It gives us more time to fine tune something that we will offer to to community, and we know that it will be fought through properly. We have a new architect, right, Richard, for, I don't know, a month, two, two months. This gives him also some time to think it through. I think it's only fair. And then it's a capacity, right? Uh, so some scenarios that we could do, hey, let's do traditional distribution, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. It costs people, right? And we have volunteers, but only like certain amount of volunteers. And uh, if we would just expand the distribution list, it will be confusing to people. We will not have enough maintenance people. Um, so it's also a capacity problem, but mostly a roadmap, really. If I'm not certain what next five years look like, it's really difficult to place a name and a version scheme and just say this is the future for, for the stable distribution. Also, if anybody would like to volunteer, we have the Help Wanted posters uh, in front of the building. So if you are interested in artwork, or you would like to maybe rethink the maintenance workflow for the next generation leap, maybe uh, that's not so much tied to the SUSE maintenance team. We would be really happy to hear your ideas. Um, so definitely reach out to me or to Doug if you are interested. And we can you know, schedule a call, involve people who can help you and see where this goes. We have about here time to kind of work on it if we would really like to deliver next-gen leap next year or leap successor next year. So uh, getting in touch. I'm not sure if, you are, uh, if you've been on open source release team meetings, but if you would have ideas, you want to maybe uh, tell us why we should go the other way. Um, there is a release team meeting every Wednesday. Then there are weekly community meetings on Tuesday and Thursday. One is a little bit more Eastern friendly. On the one on Tuesday, I think it's 16:30 uh, CST. The other one is at, uh, on Thursday. It's 9 p.m. And then, if you if you want to maybe open a feature tracker for next generation leap or even for 15.6, I'm sure that you guys know. But there is uh, open source leap feature tracker in the code open source org. Just go code open slash uh, leap slash features. You can open feature against leap 16, as we call it. Uh, if you want to see something definitely there, let us know. We have time to think, think it through and, and eventually implement it. Uh, one, one advertisement that I promised, because we open source always have booth at DEF CONF in Brno. And the DEF CONF is, thank you, Neil. I think Dorka will be happy to see that we've actually done it. Uh, 
So DevConf is in roughly two, three weeks from now. And uh, we will have our booth there. So if you didn't make it to this uh, event, uh, you can just come there. You can ask questions. We'll be happy to assist. I will not be present there in person, unfortunately, but there will be plenty of people from SUSE Open and OpenSUSE community to answer your questions. Uh, and that's basically it. I feel like uh, saying that we really want to do 15.6 to buy us some more time to do Leap 16 to give Richard time to rethink how Leap 16 should look like, should be built. Uh, there are plans to actually change the way how the factory will be built um, based on the ALP style. It takes time. That's not something that's, that will be done in a month. And I feel like if we rush it, then we will create more technical depth. So any questions that you want to ask? Simon? <laughs> I was not expecting you to ask questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll start with the fun ones. So you've mentioned using microOS desktop in the future? Not only, right? It oh, would okay. be like secondary option. You yep. would have classic and then this. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Oh, I missed the having classic as well. So Sorry for that. Yeah, so, because I think there's obviously still keen interest to have XFCE enlightenment working classically because us as the maintainers can't be bothered trying to figure out how to make it work as micro OS desktop. Yeah. But if we can get that from somewhere, even having the GDK stack from there saves us a ton of work. So that would be great. Yeah, I agree. So I feel like the most domain for alignment for XFC and so on that's going to be in the classical space, right? So we intend really to just work Tumbleweed and have the same, well, we really plan to not have, to, to do some changes, like we would like to use Agama, for example. So I, I wouldn't say we fork Tumbleweed as it is now, but sort of the direction. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, some of the, the some environments on this uh, micro SD desktop or Aeon will be tricky, so. But we have one year to solve it, or you know, maybe just say this will be available only in the classical distribution. You can download both, and then in the next major, we will see if it makes sense to kill one of them or not. Maybe we want to keep them both. I don't see, like in factory, it's just one of the other images. It doesn't add that much of work. Contribution side, yes, like there are some you know, caveats that have to be solved, but like if we just put based on whatever is currently in factory, it doesn't really put a huge load on the team, and we can offer something a little bit different. I know it doesn't answer your question. <laughs> if I take it as that more that you raise concern, right, that uh, not everything will work with the Aeon or Micro's desktop, is that correct? Or uh, is there? <coughs> no, my concern was more, would there still be a classical alternative? Yes, yes, which yes. I missed, which I missed no, from no, no, you. Absolutely. So we will, so, you know, I can, just bear with me. You go to download side, you choose yep. rolling, non-rolling, right? I yep. will, yeah, let's not call it stable. Rolling, non-rolling. And then you choose, like, do you, do you want, like, Tumbleweed as of today, like, distribution from both Leap side or, or Tumbleweed side? Or do you want to go maybe container host, which would be the only probably transactional update variant server that we offer? Or do you want to try this new desktop, which is also transactional update based? But you would still have the option to download classical distribution, like Grassy Node would be basically one of the point releases offerings, OK, yeah. next to fork of Microsoft yeah. desktop. So that, that wasn't quite clear. As long as you can go to stable yeah. and pick a classical thing, then we, we have can to make do everything that. else like, work. There is demand for it. It's the most downloaded distribution. It would be like, un, you know, unwise to drop it. Cool. But I kind of like it, like, really. And just mm -hmm. any more questions? Yeah, so let me maybe. Uh, so I really like it, just offering the same amount of distributions for both rolling and non-rolling, so people just decide how they want to consume updates. That's kind of cool. Any more questions? Nothing about timeline. I'm surprised. I also would not be able to answer, so don't ask these questions. <laughs> I can only tell you what was communicated. Yeah. But like basically, yeah, fifteen six, right? Fifteen six would be released next year. Um, you know, at about the same time as OpenSUSE conference. Shortly after, by that time, we would like to have something new. We really expect that fifteen six will not take as many resources as uh, as previous releases. You know, it's kind of even the feature set declines even when it's feature release. And we can actually, if we know that we are doing it, we kind of pledge for it. We can deliver something cool next year. And that gives you a lot of time to transition, right? Because the 15.6, if, you, if you're kind of afraid you know, of Leap 16, I, I don't think you should be. Um, but if you would be, uh, you will have basically, you will have until end of 2025 to migrate, which is plenty of time. Simon? <laughs> now I'm going to ask you a question about timelines, because it's been confusing. I, I really hope that I will not spend like more, more than one minute on this slide. OK. But okay. <laughs> so 
You're saying obviously we have a 15.6 yeah, release yeah. this time. That next extends, year. yeah. Yep, that this, makes sense. This so, mm -hmm. so, do you see a 16.0 or whatever it's called coming a full year after that? Or do you see no, it no, 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 no. six months or the same time? I really feel, based on all the information that I received, that 15.6 will release as expected, right, next year this release. And I really believe that we want to have something new, uh, maybe initial release, I would say really ne next year, you know, somewhere in the time frame. Not sure, I think that that makes sense. Because we can start parallel development now-ish, right? Like after 15.5 yep. is done. Yep, that does make sense. If, uh, well, it comes to the question of, do we know enough about what's happening at SUSE to be able to start? No, we don't know enough medical. yet. <laughs> we will know after SUSECON. Uh, if you've heard the questions, like I feel like we will know some more information after SUSECON. And then we will have enough information to start. <laughs> okay. At least based on the available information I was told. Yeah. Again, we are doing this to give more time to SUSE, right? And they said, we will we'll give you an update on SUSECON. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Neil? So how are we going to start working on Leap 16? Yeah, so it's tricky because Richard showed me on, on papers, hey, this is what I want to do with Factory. I want to change this and that and that, which put, puts us into a waiting situation, I would say. But like we already have like 16 projects. Like if you want to work now, like after 15.5 is done, like two weeks from now, well, we will do retrospective stuff like that, fix some GA issues. But then I would like revisit it. Uh, we will focus on Agama, like, uh, you know, we, we want to really use that for the next gen stuff. Wouldn't much, it wouldn't make much sense to use the old installer. We really want to invest into that area. And we would start experimenting and we have one year to make it. Um, does it, I'm not sure if it answers your question, but uh, I feel like the blocker for starting is really that we are busy, at least, you know, release team with the current GA. And then we still wait weeks, month, whatever it is to get some more information that will kind of help us understand is, are we putting SUSE into like really problematic situation or not? I think you've already gotten there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fully agree. You have but three like, variants it's of not, potential choices here. Yeah, I, I mean, think we're already in trouble. I mean, I'm being honest. I, I kind of see what we can do. I just feel like some scenarios are a little bit more fair and some are less fair. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be on the fair side, you know, I want to deliver the latest, but I also want to avoid putting my employer into like, hey, what do we do about this? Yeah. All right. Oh. Dan, you still have a question? Mm -hmm. So the whole <laughs> idea of the containerized desktop or flat pack based desktop is Dead on hold or no no what do you mean like we have micro desktop right That's no 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 I meant on Alp oh on yeah Alp, that was the initial concept that Yeshi. we're going hmm? we're yes. going to have a containerized desktop or flat pack based right, right. and so right. what's what's the plan there now uh, yeah again month ago I was thinking this is the way because like there will be desktop and everything then hey you know uh, we will come up with what you've seen on the slides already and then desktop you also mentioned on the slides no ETA. I don't really know who will be the target audience for the, desk <coughs> for the desktop. Imagine it's going to be, I don't know, ATMs, right? Like I feel like maybe like you don't want to base like a, a traditional user, somebody who's used to leap you know, to something which was designed for ATMs. And I understand we have just one Frederick, right, who's working on this, and he has also plenty of other stuff. We don't have ETA. Uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure if Stefan's talk from Suze Labs was, uh, was public or not, I suppose it wasn't. Basically, the message was that there will be some more tailored products coming later, like not necessarily with the first release, right? So, you know, it could be one of them. And uh, if I don't see any ETA, if I see that uh, his work is on hold by his other activities, I don't want to bet future on such project. I really feel like MicroS has proven, like people like that. There were several people excited about renaming it. I still feel like these renames are not helping, but yeah, maybe we should just skip names and just call it desktop, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's proven and just working it, like Richard sort of agreed in our initial discussion on factory mailing list. Also, I still feel like this is the best place where to have these discussions. It was mentioned on one of the slides. Right, yeah, yeah, here. 
uh, on the factory mailing list. I seriously recommend everybody, if you are not there, like go there if you want to have these discussions about Leap 16 or Leap Next. He likes to question stuff, so he would also say maybe it will be called something else and it will be hybrid. I still feel like Leap 16 is the most probable option for the next year. Makes the most sense. People kind of expect that. Let's not disappoint them. Uh, more questions? Doug, do you have a question? That would be, that would be a sucker punch. I don't have a question. <laughs> I, I have a, something to say, but the, I'll, yeah, sure. I can Go wait for it. Like you're part of the team. You it's, it has nothing to do with the okay. talk. Any Please. questions for Max? Like, I want to keep him busy, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like it's really mostly about available information, available roadmaps, and, you know, my position was always somewhere in between community and SUSE, and have to operate with both, like, yeah. And if one side is, is on hold with communication, we have to wait. Uh, just a small uh, clarification question. Um, you mentioned lots of things, but will we keep Tumbleweed and MicroOS non-desktop and have a desktop variant of MicroOS? Uh, again, so uh, this is what we have right now. Yeah. So you are saying if uh, MicroOS is Micro, okay, so I could have maybe done like micro as desktop and server. That would be maybe more better. Thank you. Yeah, because I see a need for both of these. No, no, no. Um, and I would really hate to see us drop one of these variants because I think they okay. have different use cases and they have a user base. Right. Uh, I fully agree. I think uh, And now here? with yeah, yeah. Eon okay. uh, around for the desktop thing, maybe micro OS is just the name for the server. Yeah rolling thingy, right, right. that would be really great to just clarify before others sure, sure. have the same question. So yeah, it should be really like micro OS, uh, like basically upstream to SUSE, SUSE, you know, Alp Micro and OpenSUSE Alp Micro. That will be the relationship. <laughs> Here we should have probably placed the Aeon, and we want to keep both. Like, you know, you really want to keep upstream for the Alp Micro, I think that makes sense. So yeah, that's thing, definitely, we want to make that. That makes sense. Thank you. And thank you. I think that we should really correct this. <laughs> now it will, we will have full circle again. Like, it was full, full circle, I don't know, last week. <laughs> cool. Then if there are no more questions, then thank you very much. Oh, OK. Problem. Ah, Jan. OK. Go for it, Jan. Don't we have enough distributions already, yeah. if I have to look at that? I, I had one more slide. <laughs> And I was like, we do have a, some serious... Yeah, okay, let me show you. I, I mean, <laughs> if, you do a, if you do a standard installation of Tumbleweed, uh, you normally get BTRFS and all the snapshots, oh. and if you choose a different file system, you let lose me. the snapshot functionality. So, uh, for example, so you can already switch between uh, transaction or not. Yeah, let me... Okay. And so if, if one distribution can do more things, then... There was, there was, there was this slide, right? Yeah, there was this slide, because... Yeah, so if I would do everything, if you would mirror everything that Susie said that they will be doing, right, I would end up with, uh, with Bedrock uh, equivalent, I would end up with Micro equivalent, I would end up with Slim Micro 6.x equivalent, uh, and that, that would be both essentially container and VM hosts, right? I don't, <laughs> I'll just go from this slide. Uh, I, I also see it, I was really concerned. So how do we actually tell users what to install? And I had these questions on Susie Labs, like, okay, Richard, so, Give me like good reasoning why you use this one and not this one for my use case. I just want to run application at home. It was like, yeah, if you are lazy, use this because it got, comes with different defaults. And if not, then use this one. This is more minimal. But essentially, there was not really much of difference outside of the initial five minutes, six minutes setup, but which took, uh, you know, this is how much it took like to set up Nextcloud, maybe 15 minutes. Um, I fully agree. Again, what we want to offer is non-rolling, rolling, Classical desktop, classical distribution, think of current Tumbleweed, just with Agama installer. Container slash VM host, modern desktop, and spins with uh, individual KDE, GNOME, whatever we support at the time, and just making rolling, non-rolling, and just simplify it like that. I feel like that kind of really narrows down the use cases. Users who don't want to change, they will just grab the latest, uh, whatever, either rolling, non-rolling, classical distribution, People with Raspi at home, they would just grab like, I don't know, host OS based on the preference, rolling, non-rolling. 
and uh, people who want to experiment with flat packs. I really like the direction, by the way, because I see a chance that multiple distributions could kind of work on quality of applications delivered through FlatHub. I love that idea. It's against fragmentation. Uh, I see how this wouldn't work for SUSE, right? If you want to support hotfixes and stuff like that, and you really want to have your own repository. But I feel like that's cool, and we want to explore that idea. So I feel like that differentiation, modern desktop, classical distribution, host OS, and I think that's it. And just make it rolling, non-rolling. That's, that's, that's easy enough to navigate inside. We just need to make it, we need to show it to the user in a way that it takes two clicks to choose what he wants to do and just decide on his own pace of consuming updates. I, I hope it answers your question. But I see the same concern. And trust me, we have uh, far less distributions on the, on the menu than we had last week. <laughs> no, I, I feel like it makes sense. I, I think it makes sense. It simplifies especially for open source user like uh, he doesn't have to think of like the defaults he just goes for the use case and we have something for every use case yeah i mean <laughs> of course The part of that statement that scares me is that you were talking about yeah, having uh, even do more. Do you want to do Slim Micro 6X and Alt Micro no. in parallel? <laughs> it's like for a user, I don't see a difference. I was talking to several people explaining, like, ah, why, you know, why do we compete over, like, uh, I don't know, tiny it's, fraction it's of too users? Much yeah, so we have now less distributions. I'm happy. I, I think yeah, that that's good. I'm just, it's just, yeah. the, the, when you showed the first chart with, the completed honeycomb. Yeah, yeah. It was I, I mean, like, it was, it was really about this slide, right? Like, we, we had competition amongst distributions, and I was thinking for non paying user uh, mm -hmm. who, who has access to everything in OBS, just, you know, just changing the defaults, that, that's not worth completing a new distribution. No, it's, you're right. Yeah, so that, that's what I, where I'm coming from, okay? Sorry for confusing you if, yeah. I, I think uh, it makes sense. Just a small addition to that discussion. It might make sense to. Uh, clarify the exact purpose of what, which part does having a transactional part in Tumbleweed We have that. Gives you, Nobody's using it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the problem is if you, if, I think it's easier for the user to just pick the right image and installer and then it goes from there. Having to decide during the installation if you want to have and you get several places where you get to the same outcome with yeah. transactional and things like that, I think that might confuse you. It's, but like imagine the crazy amount of images. We were just discussing it, like how many images we have to do. And if you just use Agama, which can install any, like, yeah. have you seen Agama, right? The, the question is, do I need to have transactional for Tumbleweed if there's already micro OS? I feel like, no, no, no. Or, so or, I, I feel like we really want to reduce the offering. And I feel like you will just install Tumbleweed or you will go for the tra transactional update distribution which will be either Aeon for desktop or it will be, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if Richard wants to rename microOS itself too or just the desktop part, but that will be the transactional update variant. We do not really want to offer like traditional installation of Tumbleweed with the transactional update profile. That's basically microOS. We want to keep it that way. This is how people use it right now. Nobody installs sleep with transactional update variant. Everybody goes for the <laughs> micro. Like that just makes no sense to me. I, you basically, I think what we're getting at is that you probably don't want to have 15 names for yeah, one sure. thing makes because no it makes it very difficult for people to figure out what's going on. Like on, on the Fedora side now, we have, you blue. Six, yeah. we have six immutable variants now with a seventh one coming. And it's just too many names, too yeah. much stuff. And you don't want to confuse people by having so many things that are yeah. intended to be uniquely descriptive but ultimately aren't. Yeah. And so, like, some slimming down, repurposing, and, you know, t removing options that don't make sense. Like, Tumbleweed shouldn't have a transactional server model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if you want that, use microOS or Aeon or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, Tamara has a question. Yeah. More like an addition of that. There's a term for that already. It's called roles. System role. If you yeah, yeah, take an uh, ISO, Agama doesn't support roles. <sighs> Why yet. not? So we have to fake it as products. Yeah, I, I know what you are talking about. We were thinking of how we can do the offering 
that would work with the current Agama backend. That's where I'm coming from. More, I'm more like uh, saying in the communication, but like uh, what you would present on the front page. I mean, the front page has this cool leap versus tumbleweed thing. And uh, would no, 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 rolling, non rolling. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe even skip the names from the initial. We were thinking of displaying logos and stuff, but yeah, just names are subject to change. Non rolling, rolling. That stays, right? Yeah, but like that would be the view. You go there and then you choose like what do you want, as we've discussed here before. Right. Okay. And yeah, if you would be happy if there would be something like system roles in Agama. I agree. <laughs> also on the topic of <laughs> But like it's simple, right? And then maybe maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Let's see. We will give a shot with what we have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, on the top on the topic of having a lot of distributions. I also don't really want to make that many logos. If we can avoid it, it uh, just you know, who has it a takes mic? some time. It's not like, you know, I can ah, okay. do it right away. So yeah, if we if we can avoid making too many distributions, I don't have to design all the time, that would be great. Yeah, I agree. I feel like less is better. Well, I I'm always thinking, so somebody comes to me, what should I install? And I feel like I really want to I'm fine with like discussing rolling, non rolling, but we shouldn't have clash in between individual distributions. Like I know that some people have preference, but then it should be really straightforward, like yeah, minimal overlap being clearly distinguished. Mm -hmm. Simon? Uh, does it answer your yeah, it was observation, I take it as that, right? So while I like your nice layout for the website and idea. I'm going to provide the counter-argument. Get, get OO, that's the website that you mean? Yep, I'm going to provide the counter-argument that having names somewhere is useful because if someone's heard about Leap or Tumbleweed on Reddit or Twitter or something and they want to go and find it and install it <coughs> from there, as long as we keep that go, or go straight to the download page, that's fine if you just have desktop and server or rolling and yeah, non-rolling, cool, right? yeah. then people are going to go, well, I want Tumbleweed, where do I find that? And they'll get confused and annoyed. Uh, if, you keep, if, you keep down the bot if you keep down the bottom a Tumbleweed button, a Leap 15.6, a Leap 16.0 button, then that's fine. People can find the thing they want. I would just use logos. Uh, Tumbleweed logo, people know that. They just click, you know, they see it, and then we can like, get from the names. Uh, yeah, but good point. You have to figure out how to not confuse the existing people and just make it like they know where to click if they are user of that distribution. Any more questions? I see. I don't have glasses, but I think it's ish, right? I know I'm tiny. But... Yeah, I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, just the light. Yes, cool. Lubos. Uh, I will. Uh, I think I'm gonna. Um, it's a supplementary question on what Simon said. Some non-open to the person coming to the website right now. They don't know the logo of Tumbleweed. Fully they don't agree. know the logo of, like, if I didn't know the open source community, I would not know the difference between Leap Micro and Micro OS. <laughs> so definitely, this part needs to, uh, apart from having names and uh, distinct logos about all the different di distributions, uh, we really need to have, a, how do you call that? A very good definition of each of those uh, definition or description, maybe yeah. each of those distributions, and have it in a nice way here. I and when I think of it, uh, I have the picture in my head of how Fedora did uh, their uh, get Fedora page. They try to really improve a lot of things. Uh, we are not there yet. Yeah, I mean we have some descriptions, right? But I also agree. By the way. Uh, this link, this link made this over to, uh, you know, like the most watched video, which is not older than, I would say, a year and a half, which is a reference from download side that tells me maybe that people kind of read it and watch it in the end. Maybe we could do that for every distribution, but I still feel like if we simplify to offering exactly the same, maybe even skip the names, like from the initial menu item, whatever, uh, and just see rolling, non rolling, and then you have the same sort of use cases, and of course they have so, they, they have names, code names, whatever. I'm going to I'm going to agree with you that your suggestion mostly solves issues problem, and so I think yeah. that if you keep both, the problem is if you have all five or six or all pieces of that honeycomb down the bottom, then you have issues. If you just have the two or three most popular things down the bottom, like a tumbleweed button, a leap 15.6, a leap 16.0 button. 
or whatever we call it, then the ones that because if someone uses if someone wants Leap Micro, they'll know where to dig through and find it. If if someone's new and wants just plain old Leap, then we should make that easy for them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe short video or something like to give them like even tell them the distribution. So I think like we need some interaction. It should not be just clicking. Yeah. Cool. May Doug, your opinion? You are head of the marketing, basically. May I, uh, one more question? Uh, we have these uh, pages. We have two of these pages. You have getopensuse.org and you have opensuse.org only. Ah, yeah. And if I am going for, for opensuse, then I go to opensuse.org. And there I see Tumbleweed mm -hmm. and Leap and MicroOS. And what the hell should I do with that? Because I am a normal person who wants to use LibreOffice by Firefox. I fully agree. Yeah. There is a guy who has like a, a prototype. Yeah. Jacob, he will take your question. That's what I mean. It's not like I'm skipping, <laughs> skipping the answer. Yeah. yeah Go for it. So there is a plan to make basically the, the here the, we have the initial choice of desktop and server to include that on the main page so that people who come to opensource.org can go directly into a more uh, specific for the use case uh, description of what they are looking for. And so instead of trying to explain Leap or Tumbleweed or MicroOS on the main page, we instead defer them to something that is more comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I think we do have a bit of a accessibility problem here because we are talking about including a video uh, which will be presumably in English, which means that we, we have an issue with SEO people who concern. speak other languages, and also the descriptions on GetOO currently are only in English because we don't translate those yet. So that there is an issue on GitHub for this. If anybody wants to do it, I welcome you. It's not that hard to improve, so. Matej, just for you. Uh, Jacob is the person who basically created getopens.org, and he has also prototypes in mind. Like, eventually, you know, we get away from software open source.org to get, which is already like a little bit smaller side, has less functionality. I feel like I see like merging potential with, with these sites, uh, with, these, with these sites, absolutely. But I also think that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you like this one better? Okay. So uh, we gotta <laughs> cut it. Thank you. Um, later tonight, uh, when we'll have the barbecue, please sit on that side over there. Um, and thanks for the bus. Thank you for your questions and suggestions.